Welcome to Mission to Mars. We will derive the basic mathematical model of orbital mechanics and computationally determine two sample orbits of a spacecraft using a Python program. The following expression generates the acceleration A of a celestial body. The body orbits around another celestial body. The expression is acceleration vector equals negative gm er unit vector over r squared, where r is the distance between the centers of these two celestial bodies. This acceleration is based on the position r of the orbiting celestial body with respect to the reference celestial body that generates the gm gravitational field. The orbiting celestial body may be a spacecraft, a moon, or a planet. The reference celestial body may be the Sun, Earth, or any other planet. The vector acceleration A of an orbiting celestial body, such as a spacecraft, equals the rate of change of its velocity vector with respect to time. The velocity is in turn the rate of change of position r with respect to time. It follows that the expression for the acceleration a given above generates the following two vector equations. One for, one for velocity, the other for acceleration. dr dt equals v and dv dt equals negative gm er over r squared. Since an orbiting celestial body moves on an astronomical plane, the description of its motion on that plane will require two coordinates, the distance r and the angle theta. Accordingly, the vector equations presented before will each generate two equations for a total of four equations for the four variables of position r, radial speed vr, angular position theta, and angular speed omega. Obtained from the previous two vector equations, the final four equations are then the following. The rate of change of r with respect to time equals vr. The rate of change of vr with respect to time equals r omega squared minus gm over r squared. The time rate of change of theta equals omega and the time rate of change of omega with respect to time equals negative vr omega over r. These equations govern the orbital motion of any celestial body around a reference celestial body on the orbital plane. These equations are then complemented by the so-called initial conditions which are the magnitudes of the four variables mentioned previously at the beginning of our investigation of the orbital trajectory in consideration. Next, we determine a set of theta-dependent solutions for the fourth and the second equation in system one. Multiply both sides of equation four by r squared remembering that vr equals dr dt and recognize the product rule of differentiation in the result. The solution is then that uh, r squared times omega is a constant and that constant may be set equal to h. This result expresses the conservation of the angular momentum h of the orbital body. In this result, subscript P denotes the configuration of the orbiting body at a given angle theta P. Next, multiply both sides of equation 2 by 2 times VR. Express VR omega at the right hand side of equation 2 in terms of d omega dt. And remember again that vr equals dr dt and recognize that the equation has become the sum of 
three time derivatives, a sum that equals zero. The solution is then that uh, vr squared plus r squared omega squared minus 2gm over r, which is a constant at any point in the trajectory, will be equal to vr squared at the reference point p plus r squared omega squared at the same reference point p minus 2gm over rp. This result expresses the conservation of the total mechanical energy of the orbiting body. The next solution provides r as a function of theta. In equation 2, express dvr dt using the chain rule, which yields dvr dt equals omega dvr d theta. Next, Divide both sides of equation 2 by omega and use r squared omega equals h to obtain the following equivalent form of equation 2. dvr d theta equals h over r minus gm over h. Since this result depends on 1 over r, set this ratio 1 over r equal to s to derive vr equals dr dt equals omega dr d theta equals negative r squared omega ds d theta equals negative h ds d theta. And then insert this result in the equivalent form of equation 2. This substitution yields the final equivalent form of equation 2. The second derivative of s with respect to theta plus s equals gm over h squared. That's equation number 4. The initial conditions at theta equals theta p equals 0 are exactly the following ones r of 0 equals r of point p. vr at position theta equals 0 also equals 0. These conditions correspond to a maximum or minimum of the distance r. With these conditions, the solution of equation 4 is exactly the following. The distance r as a function of the angle theta equals at the numerator r at position p times 1 plus e over 1 plus e times the cosine of theta. e is the orbital eccentricity. It is equal to h squared over gm r at position p minus 1 which equals in turn rp squared omega squared over gm over rp minus 1 equals in a different form rp omega p squared over gm over rp squared minus 1. This solution provides a wealth of information. If the eccentricity E is less than 1, the denominator of this solution, equation 5, never vanishes. Hence, the distance r remains finite and the orbit is thus closed. If, however, the eccentricity E approaches 1 or equals 1, the denominator of equation 5 would vanish. Hence, the distance r would grow unboundedly and the orbit would thus be open. An open orbit corresponds to a celestial body escaping the gravitational attraction of the reference celestial body that generates the gm over r squared gravitational acceleration. For an eccentricity e that equals zero, r in equation five remains constant. As a consequence, the orbit is a circle. The corresponding omega at point P becomes omega P squared equals gm over r cubed at point P. 
for an eccentricity that is less than one, the orbit is an ellipse. And uh, omega square p is always between gm over rp cubed and 2gm over r at position p cubed. For an eccentricity that equals 1, the orbit is a parabola. This corresponds to the least omega p for orbital escape. And that equals exactly omega squared at point p equals 2 gm over r at point p cubed. For an eccentricity that exceeds 1, the orbit is a hyperbola. And omega p exceeds the least escape magnitude. That is to say, omega p squared is greater than 2 gm over rp cubed. Next, we will show that we need to use the non-dimensional version of the equations in system 1. This version will then be used in all subsequent videos of this course. Let's say that we wish to investigate the orbital motion of the International Space Station around Earth. From NASA's Horizon system, we can select the ISS as a target celestial body. Choose geocentric, and that is code 500, for the coordinate center, and specify today's date and tomorrow's for the start and stop time. We obtain the following initial conditions. A radius r, that's the distance between uh, the center of Earth and the center of the ISS space station, that is equal to 6,783 uh, kilometers, a radial speed of zero kilometers per second, a reference initial angle of zero radians, and an angular speed of uh, one comma, one, three, essentially two, times 10 to the negative three radians per second. Also, from the horizon system, we can obtain the magnitude of capital GM. That's the gravitational parameter of Earth. The magnitudes of R and GM are astronomical, the pun is intended. And so, an ordinary computer could not accurately compute a space flight because of the truncations that occur in calculations with such magnitudes. To ensure accurate results, the variables are scaled down through so-called non-dimensional variables, and the calculations are carried out with much smaller magnitudes. We begin by defining these non-dimensional scale-down variables in terms of dimensional variables and reference variables in the following manner. T dimensional equals a reference time capital T times a non-dimensional time T tilde. R dimensional equals a reference length the capital R times R non-dimensional, indicated with a tilde on top of it. VR, the radial speed dimensional, equals the ratio of a dimensional reference length of a dimensional reference time, capital T, times a non-dimensional radial speed, VR tilde. Because an angle in radians is intrinsically dimensionless, then theta dimensional has exactly the same magnitude as theta non-dimensional, so theta equals theta tilde. A dimensional angular speed omega equals the non-dimensional angular speed omega tilde over a reference time, uh, capital T, and again, the little tilde on top of the variables uh, denotes non-dimensional variables, while capital T and capital R, again, 
indicate reference dimensional variables. Definitions in system six are then inserted into expressions one, and doing so results in the following expressions. Capital R over capital T, dr tilde dt equals capital R over capital T, vr tilde. And because the ratio R over T is equal on both sides of that equation, they can be deleted. For the second equation, we have R over capital T squared times dvr tilde dt tilde equals R over t squared times r tilde times omega tilde squared minus gm over capital R squared times r tilde squared. Similarly, in the next equation, we have 1 over capital T times d theta tilde dt tilde equals 1 over capital T times uh, omega tilde. And again, as we saw before, because 1 over capital T is common to both sides of the equation, that term uh, drops out. Finally, we have 1 over T squared times d omega tilde dt tilde equals, at the right-hand side, negative 2 capital R over capital T over capital R times VR tilde over R tilde times omega tilde over capital T. And because on both sides we have a repeated capital T, then again we can simplify. After simplifications, these expressions become DR tilde DT tilde equals VR tilde dvr tilde dt tilde equals r tilde omega tilde squared minus gm tilde over r tilde squared d theta tilde dt tilde equals omega tilde and d omega tilde dt tilde equals negative to vr tilde omega tilde over r tilde where the quantity gm tilde is defined as t squared over r cubed times uh, the dimensional gm. These results, labeled system 7, appear formally the same as expressions uh, in system 1. However, gm tilde can be made much smaller than dimensional GM through a judicious selection of the reference time and reference length capital R in order uh, for uh, uh, the ratio T squared over R cubed to become much smaller than 1. The reference length R may be chosen to equal the initial condition for the dimensional lowercase r. In this case, then capital R can be set equal to 6,782,95 kilometers. And as a consequence, r tilde, which is the ratio of dimensional lowercase r over dimensional reference length capital R, equals one, one unit, which is so much smaller than uh, more than 6,000 kilometers, the dimensional lowercase r. Next, consider the reference time capital T, which is defined as the ratio of two times T over T tilde non-dimensional, which is also equal to an interval delta T over an interval uh, delta t tilde, which is non-dimensional. The non-dimensional time delta t tilde is the time interval used in computations. According to these considerations, we may set delta t tilde to a small number. For instance, delta t tilde equals 0, 0,0005. The dimensional time delta t 
will be set equal to a fraction of the time needed to complete an orbit around Earth so that we may obtain a high resolution solution for one orbit. According to NASA's Horizon system, it takes the International Space Station exactly 92,9 minutes, which equals 5,574 seconds to complete an orbit. So, let's set delta T equal to 1 five thousandth of this orbital time. By making that choice, we obtain that delta T equals 1, 1148 seconds. As a result, the reference dimensional time, capital T, which equals the ratio of delta T over delta T tilde, will equal 2,229,6 seconds, or 2.5 times smaller than the time of a complete orbit. Now, with uh, capital R, that equals 6,782,95, etc. kilometers. And this reference time that is set equal to 2,229,6 seconds, the expression for the non-dimensional GM tilde will uh, uh, result in 6, 3, 4, 9, 4, 2, etc., 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 which is significantly smaller than the dimensional GM. So, the non-dimensional initial conditions become R tilde equals 1, V R tilde equals 0, theta tilde equals 0, and omega tilde equals 2,522, etc. And these are all non-dimensional variables. The corresponding eccentricity is equal to uh, 0, 0,00181. That tells us that the orbit is very nearly circular because we know that a perfectly circular orbit corresponds to an eccentricity E that equals 0. The total non-dimensional time for a complete orbit is then calculated as follows. T tilde non-dimensional for one orbit equals the dimensional time of one orbit divided by the reference dimensional time, capital T. So we have the ratio of 5,574 seconds over 2,229,6 seconds. This results in exactly 2.5 units. The non-dimensional computations are then carried out with the non-dimensional time step delta T tilde equals 0, 0,0005, which will generate 5,000 data points for a complete orbit. We are going to use the orbital motion Python program that comes with this course to solve computationally the four equations that were presented before. The number of equations and the number of parameters for our computational investigations are entered in one function. The name of the function is number of equations and parameters. There are four equations and there are three parameters. The non-dimensional magnitudes for gm, rp, and omega are instead entered in the parameters function. Observe how the lines of code in the ODE sys function reflect the four equations mentioned previously. The program may then be run. At runtime, the program requests an initial time. It may always be specified to be zero. We need to enter a final time, 2.5 units in this case, and a time step, 0, 0,0005 units in this case. The program generates the solution as a solution file and stores it in an external file named solution txt. The solution file may then be post-processed using Excel. We can open the solution.txt file in Excel to visualize the solution 
and we will obtain the orbit of the ISS, which is, as expected, very circular. A similar solution is obtained for a space probe in a parking orbit around Earth. At an appropriate time, the onboard engine is fired to generate an impulsive force that increases the angular speed of the probe. This is modeled within the Python program within the init-cond function. Change the setting for the eccentricity E to 1,2 and run the program again using the same input as before at runtime. A new solution.txt is generated. We open that in Excel to visualize the solution and we obtain an orbit for a space probe that is leaving Earth's gravity because its initial speed exceeded the escape velocity from Earth. The orbit is no longer closed, but open. That signifies that the space probe is leaving Earth and is undertaking a journey to Mars. In the next video, we will determine the most suitable launch time for a space probe to travel from Earth to Mars. Thank you very much and goodbye. Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen.